Let's discuss, then, one of the bigger issues that has really resonated with many people from the debates, and that is the issue in and around reparations. Yes. Where Marion Williamson, at one point in the debate, seemed like you were talking about, you know, feelings and, and our stresses as human beings and how to evolve and how to find that center. When it came to reparations, you came with the numbers. You were like, here's what black people are owed, here's how much they're owed, here's how much <clears throat> black people should be paid by America. This is not a favor, this is repaying a debt. Why have you been so adamant about this issue? Because you've been in it from the beginning. This has been one of your core issues. Why? I've been talking about this since my book, Healing the Soul of America, came out in 1997. When you said earlier, I seem to be balancing spiritual and material, it's not about balancing, it's about applying the spiritual to the material. Hmm. It's about applying spiritual principle in a practical way. One of those spiritual principles is you can't have the future you want if you're not willing to clean up the past. Now, when Catholics go to confession, or when Jews on the holiest day of the year, the day of Yom Kippur, the day uh, the Jew confesses the sin, has a day of atonement, in Alcoholics Anonymous, you're told that you have to take a fearless moral inventory and admit the exact nature of your character defects. This is as true of a nation as is, is of an individual, because all that a nation is is a group of people. So the same psychological and emotional processes are at play. America will not have the future that we want if we're not willing to clean up this original character defect of racism. Now, I do not believe, it's not my belief or my experience that the average American is a racist. It's not. But I do think that the average American is woefully undereducated about the history of race in the United States. So I find... <laughs> So I find, and I find this in the whitest states in America, that when you actually, I become a little American history teacher for a few minutes, and I talk about the fact that the first slaves were brought over in six, enslaved persons, uh, brought over in 1619, mm -hmm. uh, slavery not abolished till 1865, that's 250 years, followed by another 100 years of institutionalized violence against black people, that's 350 years of institutionalized violence. That's longer than this country has been in existence. I tell people about Tecumseh Sherman at the end of the Civil War, promising to every former slave family of four, 40 acres and a mule. Because think about it, you've been a slave, and now you're free, but as Martin Luther King said 100 years later, they were freed, but what were they freed to? So I'm not minimizing the, the sacrifices or struggles or successes of any of our ancestors, black or white, but the issue of economic restitution, that gap that existed at the end of the Civil War has simply not been addressed. It has not been achieved, and it's time. So Germany has given $89 billion in reparations to Jewish organizations since the end of World War II. Doesn't mean the Holocaust didn't happen. But those reparations have gone far towards establishing reconciliation between Germany and the Jews of Europe. And in 1988, Ronald Reagan signed the American Civil Liberties Act, where we gave to every uh, surviving prisoner of the Japanese internment camps in World War II between $20,000 and $22,000. So the idea of a people that has wronged another people giving financial restitution in acknowledgement of that wrong, in acknowledgement of a debt to be paid and a willingness to pay it is not a fringe idea and should not be treated as such. Free.